to Soho Trent and the world. This is Six Towns Radio. You are listening to JP on Six Towns Radio, and I am joined on the phone by actor George Newton. How are you doing today, George? I'm fine, thank you, Jeffrey. How are you? I'm all right. I'm getting by slowly, you know, just in another radio oh. show, so <laughs> it's all busy, <laughs> busy. But you're also a very busy man because you've got um, you got a Punks for Homeless and Anti-Racism gig coming up at Bunker 13 on Sunday. So what can yeah, you tell us about fun. that? Yeah, well, it's a really good cause. And when I was asked, I was, I was quite honoured, sort of, uh, cause, you know, it's, it's quite crossed me out, things like that. I mean, I've always been interested in music and things. And and uh, when I got the call to uh, to go down to Bunker 13, I was over the moon because I've, I've actually worked down there. I've done a few films down there for, so like Shane Meadows from down that way. And, uh, you know, it's quite crossed me out. There's a film I did, uh, Molly Crows, that's down there, so... So you, know, you know the area quite nice to well. Then. I know the area quite well. Yes, uh, so, and so I was really pleased to be asked to, to to attend that. So, do you do you feel strongly about the issues of the you know homeless and anti racism? Is this something that you stand for personally? Yeah, I do feel very strongly about it. Yeah, I mean, sort of, I've listened to music for years, and sort of, you know, I was I was an original skinhead, and sort of, you know, we weren't bothered about. Uh, where people come from, anything like that, it was the music we loved, you know, and this is what it should be about now. And the homeless situation, yeah, I'm, I'm very strong about that. I feel really strong about the homeless situation. So the two things combined is is very good, and like I say, I'm really pleased to be going. So did you, like, so what kind of, you said that you're an original skinhead, what kind of music did you oh, grow up listening to? I listened to all sorts of music, man, you know. Oh, I'm going back. Right, the early 70s, my original time. Wow. So like, we had everything, yeah? Proper music. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's so true. So, yeah. <clears throat> did you ever come across some like the, the, the local bands to Stoke, like the punk bands like Discharge, Broken Bones? Did they ever do anything for you? Or? I've, listened, I've listened to Broken Bones and things, yeah. Yeah, I like the music. I like what's coming out of Stoke. It's a very Stoke. I think Stoke's a weird place. Like for me personally, like growing up here, it's um, it's not much to look at, but there's a lot of culture in it. It's underbelly, you know, a lot of different bands and a lot of shows like this that just standing up for you know good causes and things like that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's really good. It, it's good that they're putting something on and sort of you know people are standing up and and supporting this good cause. Exactly. So, what can we expect from the show? Like, what kind of things will be going on there? Um, they've got the bands playing. Uh, I'll be, I'll be there, boring everyone for fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, there's, there's raffle prizes, and uh, I've got a couple of things uh, under my hat. You know, to for the uh, the raffle prizes, some really good. You know, there's there's a pair of my trousers I wore in sort of this is England. Uh, I'll sign my trousers. Uh, I've um, got various things on friends who, who donate that. Wow, uh, but there is. Really good, really good raffle prizes. Uh, we've got tickets for the uh, 160 due next year in Manchester, uh, which is the punk festival for the, the same cause, actually. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, a picture of... Uh, uh, it's a drawing of Andy Warhol, isn't it? By, uh, by the, an original painting by the organiser of the 160. Oh, He's really? donated that. So, yeah. so we got. There's a lot to go at. So, for the raffle, obviously, we, the yeah. people who are going to be spectating at the show can just chuck a couple of quid in for a raffle prize. Exactly, and then they got it's all going to a good cause. And they get they got a chance to win these basically the film memorabilia, yeah. really. But we, you know, yeah. I, I might even yeah. enter this. I'm going to be honest. Is there any way that we can um, slay it a bit if I buy a couple of hundred tickets to get your trousers? <laughs> Yeah, yeah back a few hundred tickets. Yeah. <laughs> it's my wife's birthday coming up soon, and she's a massive This Is England fan, so I might have to um, go she? down and try and win yeah. some stuff. But um, you talking about This Is England, you've appeared in in some excellent productions. You've got Molly Crows, Dad Man's Shoes, nice. This Is mm-hmm. England, and they're all quite gritty productions, quite dark. And is this something yeah. that you're comfortable working in, or is it just something that you've found to be casted in? Um, I'm comfortable in it. I mean, when you ask, you know, I found myself casting them sort of characters. I think I think I just give that impression. You know, I've got one of them lived-in faces. Yeah. Uh, and and I sometimes find 
the, the characters I play. I mean, I've played sort of in control. I played the studio manager, you know, the uh, yeah. Joy Division story uh, with Anton Corbin. Um, so I have played some mellow characters, but uh, I do enjoy the nasty side, you know. <laughs> I mean, everyone loves the nasty guy, don't they? Even it's it, like the it's nasty true. Guys. Do you have to yeah. prepare? Because, like, obviously, like... I remember the first time I saw like Dead Man's Shoes, for example. It it, it affected me. It was like a, a really strong film, and the same with things like some of the scenes in This Is England, and even Molly Crows, and it can really take hold of you. And like it's a very emotive script, and you know, it's very emotive storylines behind it. Do you have to prepare yourself mentally? Because obviously you're dealing with this stuff like on a day to day basis whilst you're shooting the productions. So do you get drawn into it, or do you have to kind of keep a gap as a professional? I can't tell everyone else, Phil, but I, I personally, I sort of, I, I look back on my past life and I've done various things. So I, I try and bring a, a bit of that, you know, into it um, when I'm preparing for each character. So, uh, you know, if they come across really nasty, that that's obviously the piece I've just made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, that's how I prepare. I, I look back on what I've done and, and various people I've met throughout life. Yeah, and see if there's a spark in there, which I can I can use. So, do you find whilst whilst these films are being shot, do you find yourself you have to keep yourself in a quite a, I'm not saying depressive state, but you have to keep yourself in quite a melancholic kind of reason, or can you switch off? Seems the camera's turned off. Do you go back to just Happy George, or I don't think there is a Happy George. <laughs> 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 no, I know what you mean. No, when, when, when I'm filming, I, I am that character, and I, I remain in that character. Because I find he, even within the darkest person, there is, there is a bit of light, isn't there? Very true, yes. So, yeah, so... Uh, so how, how, I just don't... I, as, so um, it, because obviously, you've, you've landed some really like cool roles. Um, without going into the fundamentals of the acting business, how, di- how did you get into it, and how did you find yourself being cast for these parts? Oh, how long have we got... Um, we've got a while you can go I'm interested okay. so we'll keep it going you're interested <laughs> well how I got into it uh, well it's quite a strange story I was I was actually working in Sheffield uh, I was actually running a post office at the time and uh, my agent well she's now my agent but uh, then she used to just pop in and uh, was always doing loads of mail so I just asked you know what, what she did because she seemed quite interested she was always sending letters on and she just pointed out she was a theatrical agent. So I said, that's really interesting. And she just asked me, she said, have you ever thought of being in movies? And when I was a kid, I used to sneak in the pictures <laughs> and watch the movies. But coming from the north of England, it was frowned upon. Uh, sort of, you know, you, you either went down the pit, you know. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this was it. So, so I, I pushed that to the back of my mind and joined the forces and, Sort of sell the world, as they say, and and enjoy life. But it was always something which I'd wanted to do since I was very young. So of course I said to her, "Yeah, I'd love to be in movies." So she said, "Well, go for this audition, see how you get on, see what you think." So I went for an audition, enjoyed it, and she became my agent. And I did a audition in Manchester for Dead Man's Shoes with Shane, and I was called back to to play the part of Gypsy John and. And it's history since there. So it was kind of it was a meant to be kind of story then, really. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I think I've always meant to be on an actor, you know. But yeah, a fate I mean, it must kind be them really good, good looks I've got. Well, you know. it's got to be. She must have seen them. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, this, oh, this quiet, squeaky voice I have. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that probably helps as well. Because <laughs> you are quite a, a, a husky chap. I think that's the best husky way to put it. Hey, I've never been called husky before. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go for husky, and I think you, you're you, gonna go for husky. Are you? <laughs> you, yeah. suit, you suit. I'll me. remember that one. I'll say, do you know I, what? I think husky is good. Husky voice. I, I think yeah. it, husky can be seen as a lot of things, but I'm gonna say as a positive thing. Yeah. Um, like obviously, <clears throat> with because I was, you know, with different actors will play different types. Do you think you'll always get cast for these kind of roles? Or would you like to be pushed out into different kind of things, maybe comedy or anything like that? Well, I have done. I have done Bunny and the Bull, uh, the Mighty Boosh. Oh I yeah. Played a, 
yeah, I played a Polish restaurant owner, and I've just appeared in uh, Paddington Bear, which comes out in November, and I play a sort of like a Hell Angel type, but a friendly Hell Angel. Oh, really? Sort of character, kind of, yeah. Mm. Um, and I mean, I can't see myself in a, a romantic. <laughs> you, you know? Can you imagine? Hello there. <laughs> can, I, can I take you out for a drink? You no, I just don't. I don't think that would fit me. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's more like you know. Hey, do you want your head cut you off? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry. So, have, yeah. have you got anything on the cards coming up acting wise? Any anything? Hey, yeah, I've got. Uh, I start uh, working on a film called Showground. I'm doing that with uh, Jody Latham out of uh, Shameless. All oh, right, yeah. Um, and that's based in the north. It's it's about sort of the old old fairgrounds. And I play a guy called Marco, who's the fairground owner. And it's it, I'm sort of like reminiscent of the old days, but I'm going to accept sort of you know how how the trade on the fairgrounds are, are going down now because of you know people on computers and not bothering going out to the old fashioned fairs like they used to. Oh yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, and then I'm doing another one, which is uh, uh, a New York story, and that's about a guy that comes up from America uh, to Manchester, and he gets involved within the the Manchester crime scene, and I, I play a quiet character, sort of. <laughs> a quiet I play, character. I play a character called Stan, who's uh, <laughs> one of the old school gangsters. Excellent. So, you, think, so you, you got hey, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> that <laughs> say, it'll, be, it'll be worth a watch. There's a lot to uh, look both, forward to both. then. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you. There, are, there has been one question, and you probably get asked this on a daily basis, um, okay. but we've had a lot of tweets and emails about it, and that is, will there be another This Is England? Will there be another This Is England? <laughs> Do you know, I wish I had a pound. You, you, you say you've had all the tweets and things. You'd never I wish I had a again. pound for every time everyone asks me that. <laughs> I am sorry um, to put it to you. I think what I, what I can say is I think people should just watch watch the press at the moment and and check on the internet and I think they'll they'll get the answers there without um, having to bother good people like yourselves. Yeah, <laughs> I like being asked, obviously. Yeah, but um, it's a it's a good question, and it's it's one we all try and avoid answering. Yeah. <laughs> So, it's down to Shane Meadows. Shall I leave it at that? Yeah. All right. So if we, <laughs> if people are listening, if you check Google regularly, you might find something. You might not, yeah. and it should be yeah, left if there. You look, yeah. If you look up this is England, and I'm sure there's news about. Yeah. Excellent. So going back to what this whole phone call is about, it went off on a little bit action tangent there, but um, with the. Obviously, the celebrity guest at the Punks for the Homeless and Anti-Racism show on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, will there be anything like what acts are playing? Are the acts that you've helped to pick in any way, or um, the acts playing? Well, well, so I pop down to to Stoke quite a lot. I mean, uh, I, I'm uh, with uh, Layla, who's from Stoke. I don't know whether you know Layla. Layla I, I do. Yeah. I do know Layla. And uh, yeah, and. Uh, so the, the bands, when, when they told me all the bands, I'd sort of I'd, I'd heard of a few of them, but uh, as I say, I'm, I'm mainly sort of up, up north, the north. I don't keep that much in touch with all the bands. Yeah. At the moment. But so you're looking so, forward hey. to checking out some new ones then? Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to really checking them out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and do we know anything about uh, tickets? Uh, ticket prices? Can we pay on the door? Things like that. Paid on the door. Excellent. And how much would that be? Uh, it's it's going to be five pound. See that that's, that's pretty. So that five pound, they're going to get one hell of a good evening. Well, yeah, exactly. And with that, and obviously and we can't forget club, the raffle, yeah. and it's and the money's going to go to charity. And, yeah, and you're going to put up with me for fifteen minutes. <laughs> uh, you're the guest speaker, aren't you, for this? Pardon? You're going to be the guest speaker for this show, aren't you? I am. Yes, and uh, you know, if anyone wants to afford it, just come up and ask me. You know, uh, all night. I'm I'm going to stay all night. You know, for. Excellent. To to people. So, so anyone listening and things, I am approachable. Just come and say hello, George. Yeah. <laughs> I look, I look a bit rough, but I'm not. I'm, sh- I'm sure that you'll get um, lots of people asking um, for photographs, autographs, etc. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll have to probably set you up a little table. And you can have a little, your own signing booth. 
Oh, don't do that. Don't put me a little chair. Eh? <laughs> I'm ju- I've got I like mixing deep. with people. I like chatting. <laughs> we'll get you. Yeah, right. I've been listening to bands as well. Excellent. Yeah? I know. I'm not be stuck at the bar. <laughs> no, don't yeah. you worry. I'm sure it'll let you mingle. Yeah. So it'll all be good. Even though, you know, I'm, I hope they've got plenty of orange juice for me as well. <laughs> Are you teetotal? Yeah. Is this a. I'm a teetotal. Excellent. So, see, <laughs> I wouldn't have thought, because I mean, you got a strong northern accent, I thought you're sitting there with a pint right now. Well, go on, just because I've got a strong northern accent, you'd probably be sitting there with a bottle of brown ale, didn't you? I'll be honest, yeah? I did. I really did. Yeah, you were, yeah. And I'll be stood there with an orange juice. I know, I've been, I've been, I've been, been made look like silly. I'm, I'm prejudiced yeah. now to northerners. My wife's from Yorkshire, so I'll probably get a beating when I get home now. Is she? You actually yeah. from Yorkshire? Whereabouts in Yorkshire? She's from Peniston, near Barnsley. Oh yeah, I know it. Around yeah. that way, so you know, yeah. I have to go over there every couple of times. I'm starting to be able to pick out the accent now. Yeah, you so, can pick. It. See, I, I thought I'd lost some of it. Cause yeah. Mine's northern. You, you do sound pretty northern to me. So, yeah, you know it's all. Yeah, you know, <laughs> sometimes you know it comes in the twang comes in occasionally. <laughs> Is it when you get angry and things like that? No, I never get angry. No, <laughs> the twang doesn't come in when I get angry. You're a placid guy. Yeah. I just, I just save that front screen. <laughs> Bottle it all up. Well, it's been yeah. excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. No, you're welcome, and, and it's good of you to ring up and sort of you, you support these these good causes because it is a good cause. We will, and, and I'm, I'm really I'll be the, to it. I'm going to come down and try and win your trousers. Well, you come down and say hello, yeah, and I'll see if I can find another pair of trousers. I, I will too. I'll yeah, t- but I'll, again, I'll have to put them in the raffle so. You, you, going to have the same chance as everyone else. I'm going to enter and enter until I win. I'm just going to pray to the gods yeah. of um, George Newton's trousers and I'm going to yeah. try and win them. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you very much for that. So, if, just for the last time, uh, the show is, is it this Sunday? That's correct, this Sunday, yeah. This Sunday, Bunker 13, £5 on the door. What time is it starting from? It started... Six o'clock. Six o'clock. And we've got lots of really cool bands. You're coming on as a guest speaker, it's, and it's all for a good cause, and you've got a really, really cool raffle with lots of cool prizes. Yeah, there's lots of cool prizes in the raffle. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Cheers, man. Yeah, and you have a good day. You too.